Going back, I'm moving on. I'm yet to declare to you my past is over and you of things I've been new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Yay! Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. What a moment You've brought me through Such a freedom, Lord I have found in you Your healing Who oh, makes all things new Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to be glad to you my past is over in you. All okay. things are made new. I surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. What a moment. You brought me through such a freedom, Lord. I found in you your everybody see who makes all things new yeah 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 not going back I'm moving ahead I'm here to be clear to you my past is over in you all things I made new surrounded my life to Christ I'm moving, moving forward. Ooh, ooh. You of reason, with all power in your hands, you have given me yeah. second chance. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrounded my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Say I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Hey. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you, all things are made new, surrounded my life to Christ, I'm moving, moving forward.
I'm not going back. Yes. I'm moving ahead. I'm yet to declare to you your past is over in him. Of things I've made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, moving forward. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you and mercy upon the acquire in the name of Jesus. Move forward in Jesus' name. If your hand belongs to Jesus, can you jam it together? Let somebody shout another hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether the devil like it or not. We are already stepping into the second quarter of this year. And we shall see the end of the year enjoying Jesus' name. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. Our Father. Oh, himself. What a good God you are. What a mighty God you are. You love us so much and you pay the penalty by sacrificing, by dying on the cross for us, but to rose again. Therefore, everything dead in our life will rise again in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, you have spoken that there will be divine elevation and you are not a liar. You are a faithful God. Everyone that is down in one area of life or the other, let them be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Empower your word in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over in the name of Jesus. Do that which only you can do in the name of Jesus. And the glory shall be returned to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the Lord. I want to, to welcome someone and tell him or her that this is the first level you ever see me. If you don't believe you, tell another person. This is the least level you ever see me. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Our topic for this month is divine elevation. Our text is 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 8. 1 Samuel 2 8. He raises up the poor out of the dust. And the needy from the garbage dump. He set them among princes, placing them in seats of honor. For all the earth is of the Lord, and he has set the world in order. The topic for this month is prophetic, and it's only for a few people. As as matter as that they used to say 
this topic is for me and few people. <laughs> you know, many people are down this day, especially in our nation, Nigeria, even in all nations of the world. There are some government that are down, marriage that are down, finances that are down, businesses that are down. And what the good news, even in all this situation, God said anything called downward is terminated today forever. You see, in any organization or establishment or an endeavor, when you look at any organization, at the top, you only find few people. But at the bottom, there will be many. Why is it so? It's because it takes extra strength to get to the top. Sometimes you have to battle against challenges, against difficulties, even against the enemy. So, and not many people get power to rise above their level. And that's why you find so many people at the top. Another reason is that it's easy to come down than to go up. And I say it again, none of you will ever come down again in Jesus' name. And sometimes the help that you needed in order to come up could be from man. But if it's only man that promoted you, that elevated you, the same man has limitation. He cannot promote you above himself. And after promoting you, if you are not in good book of fame or her anymore, it can bring you down. If you don't believe me, ask politicians. They say they have God's son. They encourage them to be put there for. If they don't do what they ask them to do after getting the power, they say, now it's time to impeach him. And that's what David was referring to in Psalm 41 verse 9. Psalm 41 verse 9. He said, Yea, my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, we did eat of my bread, have lifted up his heel against me. Was referring to Ithophel, a bottom friend of his, the prime minister of the state in his cabinet, who put his tent with Absalom and went against his friend. So if a man lifted you up, he can bring you. But I say, God, when you promote, no one can bring you down. When you lift me up, you'll be permanently up. And that God is the one promising you and I that this month, beginning from now, there will be divine elevation. Am I so sure? Psalm 75, 6 to 7. Psalm 75, 6 to 7. They for promotion coming neither from the east nor from the west. No, from the south. Where does it come? For God is the job. He pulled down one and set it up another. There is someone after today you will enter into double promotion in Jesus' name. Maybe you will hear me very well. I could sense in my spirit Someone will get to a level when you look at himself and say, How do I get here? Who transported me here? Who brought me here? That divine hand will elevate you in Jesus' name. When your promotion and lifting come directly from the hands of God, it is called divine elevation. And everything you say no to your lifting. This year, they shall be uprooted in Jesus' name. Now the question is, how can God give you a divine elevation? You can do it through divine help. Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 121, 1 and 2, you know it. Say, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill, from where cometh my hair, my hair cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. What? The psalmist is saying there, I will not look up to the king, neither will I look unto princess. I will look unto God. 
and I know he will help me. God will send help to you in Jesus' name. See, in Daniel 2, 1 to 49, Daniel 2, 1 to 49, Daniel received divine help for elevation. The king had a dream. He forgot about the dream. He called all the wise men to tell him about the dream and the interpretation. None of them could do it. But Daniel went to God. Who can send help from our God? He saw for God's help. God gave him the revelation of the dream. He also gave him the interpretation. And he went boldly to tell the king, this is your dream. And this is your revelation, I mean, the interpretation. And when you get to Daniel 2.48, Daniel 2.48, then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. As I stand at this glorious altar, the situation that no one could be able to hand you on to come to the scene that will bring your divine elevation. God will create it in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, you can get divine elevation through the positioning. You know, if you have three or five room bungalow in Agege or Mushi, and one way or the other, you are able to move this bungalow from Mushi and you reposition it in Banana Island or Victoria Island. You have no idea to it. You just move it from Mushi to VI. What will happen to the value? It will increase dramatically. And this is what we call elevation by repositioning. When you look at Genesis 39, 19 to 20, Genesis 39, 19 to 20, you discover that Joseph's offense was against Potiphar's wife, or Potiphar. And Potiphar supposed to send him to the prison yard where all the slaves, the nobody, those who are inconsequential, are being in prison. But something made him to say, I want this boy to suffer more. So he sent him to the prison yard where the king prisoners are being in prison. And when he got there, because Potiphar wanted him to suffer, he didn't know that he was connecting him, repositioning him for elevation. Because if I have sent him to the common prison, of the commoners. There is no way we have met the butler. But in the prison yard of the kings, or king servant, he now met the butler. And that one had a dream. You know all the story. He interpreted the dream. That brought him to recommendation before the king. And before you know it, when you get to Genesis 39, 19 to 20, you will see that the, his master took him, verse 20, and put him into the prison, a place where the king prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. He was sentenced to a prison that have no town. He's supposed to be there perpetually, but by his repositioning to the prison yard of the king and meeting the butler, he was introduced to the king. And in one day, he rose from the prison and he was standing in the palace. In one day, he got 13 miracles. In one day, even Potiphar was looking at him at the top. Your enemy will look at you at the top in Jesus' name. Whatever the position God has to do to elevate you this morning, he will do it in Jesus' name. Number three, true divine visitation. When you read really Luke chapter 5, 1 to 7, Luke 5, 1 to 7, you discover that Peter was a failure until Jesus entered into his boat. When he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, where he has toiled and caught nothing, the same situation, the same environment, the same river, he had more than enough fishes that the net broke. 
What am I saying? He failed in business. But the moment Jesus visited him, he became successful in business. As a matter of fact, he had triple elevation. Number one, the faith, the faith business now became successful. Number two, Jesus told him, you have been fishing for fishes, you will now fish for men. He was elevated to his divine purpose. There is someone here you have struggled enough. God will elevate you to your divine purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three miracle in which God elevated him, he made him not only Peter, he became the first representative of the church of Christ. Matthew 16, 18 and 19. Matthew 16, 18 and 19. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I don't know who has enough faith to take this. You will not only be elevated once, you will be elevated thrice in the name of Jesus. Divine elevation can also come by divine connection. God can give you a divine promotion or lifting through divine connection. 2 Samuel chapter 9, 1 to 5. 2 Samuel 9, 1 to 5. Mesiboshet happened to be the son of Jonathan. And after many years, David had been on the throne. One morning like this, God remembered Mesiboshet for divine elevation. And David said, is there anyone in the house of Saul that can show him kindness because of Jonathan? And they went and looked here and there. And they said, there's one. <laughs> this man they are talking about, Mesibose was five years when Saul died. This boy of five years has even now got a son. But he was forgotten in a forgotten city called Lodeba. Nobody remembered him as a royal family. All the property of father and grandfather were, on, were being controlled by a servant. And David said, go and call him. When he came, 2 Samuel 9, 7 and 8. 2 Samuel 9, 7 and 8. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that should I look up such a dead dog as I am? He has written himself up, but a money came like this. God wrote him back, and he took his position in the palace. I remember when I was in the Lord long, long years ago, there was one allergy who used to come to me every month. He must come to beg for money. If he doesn't come twice, at least once in a month. Uh, sometimes I was fed up, but he kept on coming. One day, he came. He said, he wanted to transport money to Lagos. What are you going to do in Lagos? He said, by the time I come back, my story will be different. Ah, uh -uh. What is the story? He just met somebody. And that somebody, I didn't want to mention the name of the government so that you will not know. So, <laughs> he met somebody. That somebody gave him a note to another somebody. And during the time, they used to seize all the containers that were entered into Jumirich. So, that one now told him to go to one office, and they gave him a paper and said, he's entitled to two containers that are being abandoned. So, he took the paper, and somebody, an agent, guided him. He said, you don't need to go elsewhere. Just go to where the container is. Show him the container. They opened the first one. Behold, what millions. They hope the second one, same. And instead of looking for a buyer, they said, we have ready buyer for you. By the time he came back, he came with another car. And by the time 
He was about a year plus. He became chairman of one political party called AD. I don't know who I'm referring to. God will connect you today and we divinely elevate you beyond your imagination in the name of Jesus. Amen. And when you see your neighbor, you tell him, ah, old boy, the story has a... Hey. Who am I talking to? Hey. Your story will change for better in Jesus' name. Hey. I receive it also. My story will change for better in Jesus' name. Hey. What are the type of divine revelation God will give us today? Number one, he will elevate us from zero to hero. In Judges chapter 1, when you begin to read from 1 to 32, Judges 11, 1 to 32, you heard the story of a man called Jeff Tadea. He was the firstborn in the family. He's supposed to be the one who will inherit the father's property or inheritance. But when the time came, all his siblings said, you cannot rule over us. Number one, you are a disgrace to this family. Your mother was an Ismailite, not a Jew. So your mother was a Gentile. And as if that was not in law, he was an alert. So they drove him out of the father's house of inheritance. They striped him naked. He went out with nothing. After so many years, he gathered himself where he went and became a mighty man. And you know what happened? When you read Judges chapter 11, 7, 8, and 9. Judges 11, 7, 8, and 9. There was a war facing the country. And the people, the elders, they went to, to Jephthah where he was. They didn't send letter. They didn't send message. You can see it here. He said, and Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me and expect me out of my father's house? And why are you come unto me now when ye are, ye are in distress? Verse 8. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head ever all the inhabitants of Gilead. He was sent out in shame, in disgrace. By the time they went to call him back, he became a hero. He was sent out not to rule over his family, but this time when he was coming back, not only to rule over the family or the city, the totality of the country. You might be nothing in your family today, you might be nothing to write home about, but after your divine elevation, you will become hero in the name of Jesus. Amen. The whole city now welcome him. Why? Because they have army without a commander. Someone said, an army without a general is like a body without head. So they have to beg him. Why you have been rejected? After now, you will be accepted in Jesus' name. Number two, divine elevation from shame to fame. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, 6 to 12. 2 Samuel 6, 6 to 12. We have the story of a man who has no reputation, who was inconsequential. His name is Obededon. When they are taking the ark of the, of the Lord into the city of David, they're supposed to allow the priest to carry it but they put it on the cart. On the way, the cart shook, and Usa, who is accustomed to the ark, didn't want the ark of God to fall down, and he took his hand just to support the ark that it will not fall, and God smote him, because only the priest was allowed to touch the ark of God. And David, the king, the giant killer, was terrified. He was afraid. He said, ah, if this thing can kill like this, I don't want it in my, in my, in my house or in my palace. So they look around. Obededon was there. He saw how he killed Lusa. But, you know, he's a man of no reputation. If he dies, nobody will mock, mock, mock him. It was a, like a living coffee, as people used to say. Then they say, okay, let's take it to his house. 
the decision that they think we undo you will lead to your promotion in Jesus' name. Amen. So they sent it to his house. When you get to 2 Samuel 6, 11 and 12, something dramatic happened. And the heart of the Lord continued in the house of Obededom, the Gita, three months. And the Lord blessed Obededom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obededom and all that pertained unto him because of the act of God. This is a man who had been dwelling in shame. Within three months, within three months, his fame went around the whole country. And they have to tell the king, things have changed for Obededom. You may be thinking it's only the act of God. It's God that is backing the act that gave him divine elevation. If you don't believe me, read your Bible very well. Usa, his father, Abinadab, and his other brother, they were keeping this up for 20 years. Nothing changed in their life. There are so many people coming to the church day and night, nothing changed in their life. I used to watch in the camp some people that just come. They just come. They are not even part of uh, the, the real, real redeemed member. But they have faith. The moment they had it prophesied, they took it. They work on it. They act on it. The next thing, they will say, I just came. Oh, somebody just introduced me. And here is me. I've received my miracle. And those that are there for years, they are waiting. So the ark have been in their house for 20 years. Nothing changed. That will not be your story. So the man that was living in shame now becomes so famous that Everybody wants to be like him. I don't know who I'm referring to. God will elevate you divinely in the name of Jesus. And your miracle will become uncomfortable in the name of Jesus. Can be divine elevation can be from poverty into prosperity. You know, in our nation today, many people are down financially. Some people have been feeding people, they are now feeding him. Some people that have been giving generously to others is now begging. But today, the story will change. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7, 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7, we have the story of this widow popularly known as the widow of the sons of prophet. Her husband died and left dead. A creditor came to take his two children. If, as, if she has allowed that, the children who have gone for seven years before they see their mother again. So she ran to the prophet. And the prophet said, what do you have? He said, a little bottle of oil. He said, that is enough. I want to tell you, you are not born empty. There is a potential in you. All the potential that have been hidden, that has stagnated your progress, they will begin to manifest in Jesus' name. So he said, that is enough. Go and shut, borrow vessel. Among your neighbor, shut the door, begin to pour, and it started pouring. The oil did not stop until there was no vessel again. You see, the blessing of God for your life is unlimited. But you can only assess it by faith. And the degree of faith you have will determine the extent of your feeling. I don't know who will believe God with his word today and say, I am not going back in the same level. Whether the devil like it or not, I will enter into my divine elevation. So she believed God and started pouring. After pouring, he went back to the prophet Elisha. What do I do now? He said, go and sell it. First pay your debt. Now begin to live with that. You and your children for the rest of your life. What makes you down financially? Is it because you lost profit in your business? Is it because of economic downturn? We may not know how God is going to do it, but I have assurance for you. He will change the tide this morning. Yeah. Poverty will become stranger to you in the name of Jesus. It can also be divine elevation.
from defeat to victory. There is nothing glorious in defeat. You know, when I was to start, I said, not only in Nigeria, many people are being defeated. Some are defeated by their marriage. Their marriage is in shambles. Some are defeated by their businesses. They don't know whether to move forward or backward. Some, their career, they have been there without promotion. And that is why you are hearing what you are hearing today. Because after now, you are entering to your victory in Jesus' name. Amen. David was a giant killer. He killed kill lion and bear with just ordinary hand. He killed Goliath without sword. But you know what? Saul the king drove him out of his country. He went to partner with the Philistines and said, we go with war to them. The, the Philistines said, ah, the one who killed Goliath, they drove him out of the camp of the Philistines. And they trekked three days to get to their own camp. By the time they got to their own camp, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, you begin to read from one. You know, by the time they got to their own camp, enemy have captured their wife and children, have taken away their property and burnt their houses into ashes. When the giant killer saw the situation with his 600 soldiers, the mighty men, they began to weep. The Yoruba has an adding, some people will boast and boast. It's because we have not seen a challenge. The challenge that will overwhelm you will not come your way in Jesus' name. Yeah. They wept until there was no strength in them again. I pity leaders. And they say, ah, ah, we are weeping. It is better we stone this David. Is it David that caused the problem? They have a similar problem, but they put everything on David. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Are you being beaten left, right, and center? Do you have problem every time? Are you confronted with challenges, both from home, from work, from business? Somebody came and told me, I said, Daddy, I'm tired. Battle here, battle here, battle there. I say, ah, that's good news for you. Is the one who has a purpose, who amount to something that devil will pursue. The one who did not amount to anything, devil will just leave him alone. I say, you will soon come out. And thank God he came out. You too will come out in Jesus' name. So David encouraged himself in the law and said, God, what do I do now? Do I pursue these people? Will I overtake them? God said, go. Pursue them. You will overtake and recover all. So when you get to 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 19, 1 Samuel 30, 19, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither son nor daughter, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. They feel recovered all. After that defeat, read your Bible. You can't find where David was defeated again. And I'm saying by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, as I stand at this glorious altar, after today, in every aspect of your life, you will never be defeated again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Don't say, ah, my marriage is irreparable. I cannot go back into that marriage again. God has me to tell you, you will enter into a fresh honeymoon. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Divine elevation can be from grass to grace. When you read the story of Esther in chapter 1, beginning from verse 18, Esther was a slave in captivity. He was, she was also an orphan. At, as a fact, it was really grass, not grace. And then they, they took them to the king. There is nothing Esther possessed that other virgins didn't have. She was beautiful, they were also beautiful. 
She was a virgin. They were also virgin. As a matter of fact, they are the citizen, but he was a stranger, a slave. Every odd was against her. But he had one thing that other did not possess. He had God of Israel behind her. And what did God do? God took away fasting and replaced her with Esther. Esther rose from grass to grace. That will become your story from today. The level you are today will be the least you ever experience in Jesus' name. So what will happen after you receive divine elevation? Number one, the one you used to serve will begin to serve you. Amen. Potiphar begin to serve Joseph. So also your enemy will serve you. Amen. Number two, those who mocked you before, they will now bow down for you. Amen. The sons of the prophet, they mock Elisha when he was following Elijah. They will take away your, your master from you today. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 15. 2 Kings 2.15. But when Elisha was coming back and they saw that Jordan parted way in his presence, they said, all the sons of the prophet, what did they come to do? They bowed down before him. Your adversary will bow before you in Jesus' name. Amen. After your elevation today, those who laugh at you will begin to laugh with you. Amen. When God gave Sarah divine elevation, somebody that was old, not menstruating, it's not every, everything about womanhood is already removed. God said she will bear a son. And not only stranger laughed, she too laughed. But at the end of the day, God gave her laughter. So, if herself now said in Genesis 21 verse 6, Genesis 21 verse 6, and Sarah said, God had made me to laugh so that all that hear we laugh with me. People will begin to laugh with you. In the name of Jesus. But you too have a responsibility. Most, what must we do to receive divine elevation? Number one, you must humble yourself. James 4.10. James 4.10 say, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and shall lift you up. What must we do? Make the kingdom of God your priority. Don't have plan A, B, C. Let God be your plan A. Let it be your plan B. Let it be your plan C. If you put God first, it will put you first. If you put God first, it will be identified with your situation. Let the kingdom of God paramount in your life and be your focus. Then it will lift you up. Number three, be diligent and hard working. You can't say you are one elevation and you are not industrious. If you are looking for a job and you get here and you can't do it, they will sack you there. You are looking for a contract, you get the contract, the time, the period of the, the contract period expire, you are still on the foundation. They will take it away from you. So you must be hard working. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs 22, 29. See that a man diligent in his business it shall stand before king. It shall not stand before me, man. In conclusion, God made a promise for you and I that he is going to elevate us divinely. If you ask me how, I don't know. If you ask me, is it today or tomorrow, I don't know. If you ask me by what means, I don't know. But I have confidence in the word of God. He said, Every and I shall pass away. His war shall not pass away. Whether you believe it or not, I will share my testimony. <laughs> but you have a responsibility. Joseph ran away from fornication and adultery before he was elevated. Genesis 39, 7 to 12. Genesis 39, 7 to 12. You are a man, you are running after married women. You come to the church, you pray, you prophesy, you do everything. You still run away after married women. Or you are a married woman, you are running after another man's husband. And you come to the house of God, you sing, you dramatize, and you pray. It doesn't work that way. 
Because the hand that will lift you up is a clean hand. And if you put yourself in pollution, how will it be able to lift you up? So you need to run away from what will pollute your life. Number two, Daniel 1a. Daniel proposed in himself not to defy himself with the king food and wine. He didn't want to defy himself with corruption, with bribery, with falsification of record. He wanted to stand clean. He said, I will not defy myself. He refused to compromise. And that's why he was divinely elevated. What of about three Hebrew? In Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 18. Daniel 3, 16 to 18. Isaac and Abednego, they answered the king. Say, King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. One thing we know, we will not bow down to your idol. We know the God that we serve is able to de deliver us. But if he doesn't deliver us, let it be. But many children of God today, what are we doing? We bow down with the corruption of the people. We bow down to he got him wet, he got him money. We bow down to idol. Even some are bowing down to criticism nowadays. And they, kept, they, will, they will be eating communion with God and another communion with the devil. They be bringing negative fire and negative anointing to the house of God. May God have mercy on you. You must run away from this if you really want to be divinely elevated. Hear what the word of God is saying. Isaiah 1, 18 to 20. Media, please put it on the screen. Isaiah 1, 18 to 20. He said, come now and let us reason together, say the Lord. Are you seeing it? Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So the ball is in your court. You want divine elevation. Give your life to Jesus. Surrender your challenges to him. Run away from things that will pollute you and pollute your destiny. And say, here I am, Lord, this morning. I am ready for you. Take hold of my life and lead me beyond the sky. You know, I used to say sky is your limit. One of our biological child, our biological children said, he said, Daddy, my own is not limited to the sky. He said, I've gone beyond the sky. Maybe there are one or two people whose, live, whose sight is beyond the sky. Are you there? Let me see your hand up. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Can you rise up like soldier? Say, Father, Father. You're, a good God. you're a good God. Whatever is separating me, between me and my progress, whatever sin that is bringing me down, have mercy and erase them now. Go ahead and talk to Jesus. Have mercy. Have mercy and erase them now. Have mercy and erase them now. Have mercy, have mercy, and raise them now. In the name of Jesus, have mercy and raise them. In the name of Jesus, have mercy and raise them. In the name of Jesus, have mercy and raise them now. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We used to sing a chorus. I am tired of the valley. You tell God and say, Father. I am tired of being down. I am tired of being defeated. I am tired of shameful life. I am tired of poverty. I am tired of stagnation. By the power of your word and the efficacy of your name, 
Give me divine elevation in the name of Jesus. Elevate me now. Elevate me now. Give me divine elevation in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me divine elevation. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. You want to pray another prayer as you want to begin the anointing? But if you are here this morning, the word of God is touching your heart. God is saying, son or daughter, I want to change your life. I want to change your situation. Surrender all to me. Surrender your life and begin to serve me and you want to do so, can you please come to the altar so that the pastor will pray for you? And after that, uh, we have anointed the minister, you will also be anointed. Wherever you are, problem doesn't know shyness. Do you know that? Problem doesn't know shyness. It doesn't say, I mean, my friend is looking at me. So you know where the shoe is pinching you. I want you to come boldly, confidently to the presence of God and say, Lord, things must change for better in my life. Begin to come forward and we will pray with you. Is that right? Okay. The prayer you are going to pray now is that you're going to say, Father, from today, I confidently before you Never again will I ever be defeated. You lift me up and let me have power to stay up. Don't let me ever come down again. Go ahead and talk to Jesus. Go ahead and talk to him. Don't let me ever come down again. Let your power flow in this place. Let your healing come in this place. We've called for signs and wonders in this place. Let your presence show in this place. Let your power flows in this place. Let your healing come in this place. We call for signs and wonders in this place. Let your presence show in this place. Let your power flow. In this place, let your healing come. In this place, Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we cannot thank you enough for that which you have done for us today. You have surprised us pleasantly. You have intervened in affairs of our life. You have given us a new story. You have given us a new beginning. Never again shall we be defeated in the name of Jesus. As you have divinely elevated us by your anointing, up we shall be in the name of Jesus. Whatever has not been working for us, we work for our favor in Jesus' name. We work for our success in Jesus' name. In our family, we shall be up. In our career, we shall be first. In the comp of among our compatriots, even in our offices, you will make us number one in Jesus' name. All the business that have been nose diving from now, 
receive lifting in the name of Jesus. I speak again to that marriage. Every irreconcilable, reconcile them now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a new beginning there in the name of Jesus. As we go, go with us in Jesus' name. Throughout this month, there will be joy. There will be lifting. There will be promotion. There will be expansion. There will be enlargement. In the name of Jesus. And we too will serve you more in Jesus' name. We will dedicate more and more in the name of Jesus. Your glory will radiate our life in Jesus' name. You have taken us up today. We will never, never come down in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. Jesus' mighty name we are praying.